In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Barbarian build guide. This is a strength-based build that deals incredible damage and can often one or two shot most enemies. To make this build, you're either going to choose Hero or Vagabond. The start of the game, ideally, I think Hero has a better stat spread of the two because it has less dexterity, which you don't need very much, and it has more strength, which you need a lot of in order to use this Y-Hander, so, or any other Colossal Sword for that matter. So I think Hero is a better choice, but you can do it with either. Okay, so putting this build together, the things you're going to need are obviously this Y-Hander that's located from the Isolated Merchant, who's in the southwestern part of Weaving Peninsula. So once you have 3,500 runes, you're going to want to head down there and pick that up right away. You also need the Whetstone Blade that's in the Gatefront Ruins right at the beginning of the game. You can farm some runes there as well and get some better armor, so that's not a bad place to start the game. You're also going to need the Ash of War Warcry, which is located at the Warmaster Shack. You can buy that from Bernal there. He sells it to you pretty cheap. It's like 800 runes or something like that. He's located in Northeast Stormhill, so go get it from him as soon as you have this Y-Hander. The two talismans you'll want for this build are the Turtle Talisman, located in Eastern Stormhill. This is very good for stamina recovery. This build has absolute stamina consumption problems. You use so much stamina with this build that you have to regenerate your stamina quickly or you're just standing there doing nothing. So that talisman is an absolute must. And the other one is the Axe Talisman, which increases the damage you do with charge attacks. This build has a huge focus on charge attacks. It does them over and over. And this talisman increases the damage by 10%, which might not seem like a lot. But as your overall damage increases throughout the game, that 10% is going to, that number is going to increase from like 40 damage at the beginning of the game to like 80, 100, 200 damage later on at the end of the game. The Axe Talisman can be located in Mistwind Runes, which is kind of east of Limgrave. You can check the wiki for the exact location. Beyond that, you're going to want to upgrade your Y-Hander as soon as you have it. Again, there is the stones you can get from the statue at the top of Stormhill. Have the trolls break that for you to get a bunch of them, and there is a bunch located in the mines. You want to get that up to plus three as quick as you can. Okay, so once you have the build put together, the general strategy for this is to use the charge attacks to start out fights. This build works extremely well against tough enemies. If you have trouble with tough enemies, this is a fantastic build for you. Now, charge attacks applies to holding R2 until you actually fully swing. Now, when you do an R2 normally with this build, you're going to do like a thrust. That's like got pretty long range. It does really good damage. And the Axe Talisman will boost that. But what we really want is to use Warcry with L2 to change your R2 charge attack into like a charging attack. Like where you're running forward and charging actually. Um, two different definitions of charge. This ability is really, really strong. It hits harder than the regular charge attack, and it also gives you a certain amount of poise, meaning that like, you can just bowl through enemies or tank through incoming hits when you do this, and a lot of times you'll just pancake enemies in one hit, and if not, you'll stagger them, and you can follow up with an R1 and deal incredible damage and usually wipe them out in two swings. One thing you may not know about this game is that each enemy in the game has a stagger meter, not unlike yourself where if they get hit a certain number of times, they stagger, allowing you to do a critical attack. And that's kind of what you're going for for this build. You want to try and stagger enemies so that you can get that critical attack. And just like a bleed bar from the other video, it's an invisible bar that fills up as you attack more and more. And as you stop attacking, it begins to drain, and it'll take more attacks if you wait too long in between attacks. So the idea is you charge in, you pancake them, you hit R1, R1. Ideally, you have enough stamina to get them off. Usually, that staggers them. Then you do a critical attack follow that up with a charge again, and usually that wipes out just about anyone. And if it's a boss, it takes at least half or more of their health off, and in some cases will just outright kill them. Warcry also buffs your damage a little bit. I think it's about 10%. It's not a huge amount, but between that and the charge, you're going to deal substantial damage. And this lasts about 20 seconds, so you'll need to refresh it. You're not going to need very many FP flasks. This is not a very FP-hungry build. So you're going to use like one FP flask and the rest health, or maybe two FP flasks and the rest health if you have a lot of flasks, because you only need to replenish that from time to time. Unlike the Berserker build that focuses a lot on jump attacks and things like that, this build doesn't have as much focus. It focuses more on the charge aspect, but that doesn't mean you can't jump attack or you can't roll attack. These are still really strong, or just generally R1 or R2. That The weapon the Zweihander has a really good move set, and you should get used to it because it's very, very strong. It has like a lot of horizontal AoE, so you can cleave through a lot of enemies at once if you know what you're doing. Also, something I want to mention is that mounted combat with this weapon is a bit strange. First of all, the R1 and L1 attacks hit really close to you, like really close, almost like dagger range. So you sort of got to get used to that. It's not something you'd be expecting after using like a claymore or a greatsword that kind of sweeps out a bit. But the R2 and L2 attacks do insane damage. 
And not only that, the second the tip gets in the ground, if you ride through any enemy, it does damage to them. And then when the sword comes up, it does damage again. A lot of times shooting them up into the air like a geyser. So learn to use those L2 and R2 attacks when you're mounted. They work a lot better than the R1 and L1, although there is a time and place for those. But you can absolutely just devastate whole packs of enemies with a good R1 or, sorry, R2 or L2. Like most builds, you're going to want better armor than you begin the game with, not only for protection because you're going to be trading blows, but you want high poise with this build because that will prevent you from being interrupted when you're doing those charge attacks. Between the poise you gain from doing the charge itself and the poise on your armor, you can actually just go through some really heavy hitting boss attacks sometimes. And you, so you want to pay, pay close attention to that poise stat and try and wear pieces with high poise if possible. Just make sure that your equip load is in the medium range so that you can medium roll. Talking about stat spread, you want to get to the minimum requirements for the Zweihander as quickly as possible. That's 19 strength and 11 dexterity. That means you need to put 3 points into strength and 2 into dexterity. That should happen fairly quickly. Once you have that done, you're going to crank vitality and endurance, probably going 1 to 1 or something like that, because you need more health, and you need to increase your equip load so you can use heavy armor with good poise without fat rolling. Early on in the game, your stats are going to look something like 20 Strength, 11 Dexterity, 20 Endurance, 20 Vitality, something like that. From that point forward, you're going to want to just keep cranking Strength, Endurance, and Vigor throughout the game, unless you need more Dexterity to meet the requirements of maybe some other Colossal Sword that you want to use, like the one that drops from the boss in Castle Morn. And just one last note here about the Ash of War Warcry. Make sure you use the heavy version on your weapon, not the standard. It will increase your damage because of the amount of Strength you have and the scaling of the weapon at plus four on this y hander you have like B scaling, which is pretty good for plus four. And you're going to be cranking strength anyway in order to meet the requirements of bigger colossal weapons and deal more damage. So make sure you use the heavy version when you're using it. So that's it for our Barbarian Guide, and that's a wrap on our Beginner Guides. The next build, I think, is going to be an advanced build, which is going to be showcasing the Spellblade 2.0. So if you've been wondering where to take your Spellblade, then make sure you check out that video.